All right, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us for the fourth session in our lunch hour webinar series. We have today a very exciting speaker. Uh, Dr. Dai, are you present? Yes, I'm, I'm here, I'm here. All right, noted, Doc. So Dr. Dai is uh an outstanding TVET practitioner with over 32 years starting out as a trainee way back in 19 something i won't say it so you won't predict her age so she's been with TVET since the 1980s and has had some remarkable journeys in leading and managing TVET institutions so today we invite um, Dr. Janet Dyer to share with us some of her experience and where she sees TVET going in TVET 5.0 in meeting the new industrial revolution and to reposition this old skill economy so that we the people can benefit from employment and training um, within the grander scheme. So without taking away any time from Dr. Dyer. Dr. Dyer, over to you for your presentation. Good morning, everyone. I am now, I'm getting my presentation up to um, be able to, to speak to you. But if my presentation um, does not go up, then um, I'll, I'll just speak to you from where I am. Um, for today, we will be looking at TVET 5.0. And in TVET 5.0, we ask ourselves- I, I should be putting it up, Doc. I should be sharing your PowerPoint, Doc. I'd be happy if you do that for me, because you know, I, even though I speak about um, metaversing and ambient learning, I'm still in the learning process. Right, because so you're, chipping, you're chipping in and out, Doc. Okay, um, let me take this off. Can you go ahead and, and put the presentation up for me? Right, I'm doing that in the meantime. Okay, so I um, want to welcome everyone this afternoon to um, our presentation that looks we want to look at TVET 5.0 today and reimagining TVET for sustainable economic growth. And um, we start today by simply saying to ourselves, times are changing. And uh, these changing times requires new approaches. And what are the new approaches that we um are looking at the first and foremost we are looking at the objective of this TVET 5.0 is to reinforce human capital and to provide people with the right skills in a work environment pointed towards ambient learning i um, spoke to ambient learning not long ago and um for us Ambient learning is bringing dramatic changes to the workplace, occurring between people and smart technology. Now, if we don't bring ourselves up to the point where we can coexist with smart technology, then we are on a downward trend. COVID, um, for the last couple of years, has been a massive disruptor, technological disruptor, health disruptor, financial disruptor in just about everything that we do. But we are resilient and we're able to bounce back. So the time is now for us to become more innovative, for our employers to allow our employees to become more innovative and give them that room to take risks. Our human resource departments 
must change their existing approach to talent acquisition and retention based on these realities. Because if we are not able to do all of these things, we speak of TVET 5.0, but then we will realize that there is such a gap that we are going to have to catch up with 4.0 before we now align with 5.0. So we're looking at toward what we call towards industry 5.0. Mr. Gordon, can you put it on slide for me? Right, and we go down to slide three that speaks to us moving towards um, industry 5.0. And moving towards industry 5.0, here we see we're the society of tomorrow is the curricula of today. What we do today is going to determine what happens in our industries tomorrow. We all speak of persons being educated, but we have to realize that education can only be in the, that initial point. We must reorganize to cover lifelong learning. We have to now have education being about re-engineering for a change to improve the TVET system. Our employers of today must provide support and stimulation for employees to understand, to learn and to deploy his or her capabilities which will give new opportunities. And we are seeing that in all industries across Jamaica today. Persons who are not given the opportunities to learn, to use their capabilities in garnering new opportunities are moving on. And us as a small developing island, we cannot afford that. No, I know persons might ask, what is this conundrum that we have here before us? But then if we are looking at moving to TVET 5.0 for sustainable development, we see some mega trends that are happening. It has started some time ago and it continues to happen. We have climate change. We are still in a pandemic. The urbanization that is going on, immigration um, that is taking place um, with us. We have the shifts in, in, in economic power, tech disruptions and demographic changes. All of these big changes are going to require new skills. And how do we um, acquire these new skills? We have to go back to one of the mega trends that we are looking at now is where we have to provide people with new qualifications to meet this big change. And this big change can only come forward when we transform our education system by integrating TVET as a holistic component of our education system, where we look at ongoing lifelong learning and practical knowledge. We look at new environments for learning. And we, if we have not yet started, started to build the curricula for the future. And this curricula that we are, um, need to build for the future must be to green, green environments, the whole greening of our environments, the, the, the technologies that, that we need um, to out there, and the ethical principles that we have to adopt as we go. Then and only then, will we be able to say that we are on the road to vocational excellence? 
But before we get there, we have to measure how much of our education framework is currently aligned with industry um, 4.0. Are we still into this data mining um, within our education system and not using the, the natural languages of processing? We have to get to, to those points. But then what do we do to get there? We have 2030 targets. And our 2030 targets here are looking at 80% of our world population being digitally literate. And when we think of that, we are looking at approximately 20 million persons across the, 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 the world becoming ICT specialists, right? We have to now work with our SMEs, our universities, our tech colleges to reform, <coughs> sorry, assessment methodologies or training methodologies. We have to go into community engagement as well as find those persons out there to work along with us for our funding opportunities. When we look at the, the digital decade target, and this was taken from the digital compass, which was published in March 2021. It tells us that 56% of our population has little or no digital skills. But by 2030, we are aiming to have at least 80% of that population. We go further to say that Currently, there are 7.8 million persons who have some form of digital skills. But our aim right here is for, by 2030, to have 20 million persons employed as digital specialists. And we ask ourselves, how are we going to get there? Well, Jamaica is but a small country. But if we are looking at these numbers across the population, how are we going to get there? Now, we see where the nature and skills is changing. And the key for us is to be flexible and to be ready to learn new skills, to follow lifelong learning soft skills and be open to new trends. I'm coming from an age where I had to read everything from a textbook and transcribe it onto a full scap or a notebook because I'm that kind of learner. I have to be able to write it to learn. But in today's technology, Industry 4.0, we don't need to do that anymore. We now have digital books. Our students, they have their, their gadgets that they're able to get all of this information from. Does that allow for the kind of flexibility that is needed for all persons to be on that continuous process of lifelong learning? And yes, we get the lifelong learning component of it. But what about the soft skills? Where are we with the soft skills? Are we open to new trends? And this is very important because even within our teaching space, within our workspace, within the, 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 the spaces that we have to do training and interact with each other, we find that we have persons there who continue to say to us, this is how I learned it and I'm not changing. This is how we have 
always done it and it worked. So why are we changing it? If we don't, we have to face the risk. And as we go further, we'll see um, some of the risk of us not wanting to change. Then we also have to look at the, the issues, the challenges that we have with one, two, our one, management one. and um, our corporations or even within our institutions where there is that fear of technological changes. We have to find ways to break down these complexities because in this fast-paced environment that, right? that we are operating, decisions have to be made quickly. And if we are not able to make these decisions, we are going to be left behind. I pulled a slide from Tools and, and Technologies for Transformation here and speaking to the challenge for upskilling and reskilling towards and industry 5.0. And one of the main areas it speaks to is the technology disruption. A lot of us are not yet ready for this kind of disruption. We speak to metaverse. And I'm sure a lot of us are going to ask, what is metaverse? How does that come into our daily lives, how does that work with, um, with us? But we have to understand that metaverse um, has to deal with anything that speaks to augmented realities, the artificial intelligence. And how do, how, how do we transform to those areas? I use an example of visiting the restaurant show in Chicago in May. And I had the opportunity to order a cup of coffee that was totally prepared using AI. It was a computer that took the order. It was a computer that measured the coffee, that boiled the water, that added the condiments, prepared the coffee, put it on a tray, and brought it to me at the table that I was sitting. This is Industry 5.0 at its best. But we continue to hold on. We, we are not ready for the transformation, but we better get ready. Because you know something? It says here that by 2025, as the adoption of technology increases, 50% of all employees will need reskilling. And I, this is from the Future of Jobs report. So we are at that point where we now have to um, inflect. Are we operating in industry 4.0 and making ourselves ready for 5.0? I'm not, I'm not sure we are there. So as we move towards, there are some things that we have to do. Can you move the slide down to slide 10 for me, please? Hello? I'll continue. When we look at um, slide 10, when it comes up, we will realize that for us to be able to move into this um, future dimension, there has to be ongoing and future digital skills exploration. We have to bring new tech skills to our kids. That's only for them to be able to, to um, have a laptop or, or a computer where they can go in. We have to bring these skills to our kids. 
we have to get to the point where we are able to cope with the digital skills gap, where we are able to realize that Industry 5.0 is not a revolution, that Industry 5.0 is not a tech approach, nor is it a digital transformation. Industry 5.0 is for us to become human centric, where we take that human centric approach to what we do. This is where we have to look at workforce transformation and how that workforce transformation is going to take us into this new reality. And we also have to prepare ourselves for moving away from Industry 4.0. Now, how do we foresee the human-centric transformation? We have to be able to see this through virtual reality and gamification. Now, virtual re reality and gamification is, is here with us. It's been used in our classrooms. It's been used in the industries. But um, the question we ask, are we ready? How do we now open ourselves to the social and ecological sciences? How do we put the science, the technology, the arts, the engineering and the mathematics into all we do? How do we am now become embracing of the lifelong learning possibilities? enabling ourselves to be that responsive and flexible that when this whole metaverse that we are speaking to becomes a reality, we are able to transform and move into these areas. When we speak of metaverse, we don't really know what it is going to be like out there, you know because we have that human component and we have to be able to see that virtual component and how that virtual component now integrates with the human side because we have to realize that 5.0 does not mean that the humans are going to sit aside and wait on the virtual reality to take over. That won't happen. Because any way we take it, humans are going to have to be there to work with it. But if we don't, as humans, we are going to find ourselves left behind. And we, we can't afford that. Our sustainable development cannot afford that. So how do we anticipate the risks that comes with us not responding? We have to ensure that the levels of flexibility that we put out there is at the level where we become so responsive to the changes that are out there. And we have to um, realize that a lot of the changes that will come our way are going to be digital and technological um, changes. Are, are, are we adaptive to the lifelong learning concept that we, we will have to be a part of? Are we coming together to deal with the complexities that are out there and how we are going to be dealing with them? And are we working together to ensure that as we move from 4.0 to 5.0, that 
to 5.0, that the changing natures of the jobs, we will be able to deal with them. That by 2030, we will be able and find ourselves in a position to upskill at least 50% of our workforce. And you know why I say 50% of our workforce? Because by 2030, 50% of the jobs that we are doing now will not be there. And we have to put ourselves in a position to be able to upskill our employees, our young people, using the curricula of today to ensure that as they move into this um, new dimension, into this, and I, I call it this new um, utopian age. I love to use this phrase that says, um, us moving to um, 5.0, we are tinkering with utopia. But then there, there are the challenges and we have to adopt these challenges and become resilient. We have to become human centric because if we do not become human centric and adopt the technologies that are coming towards us, we will not be able to sustain the skills development that we need to sustain economic development. So as we look as, uh, at the tools and technologies for this transformation, we see where the priority is for us to understand the territory needs and then to co-create the new curricula within TVET. We can no longer sit and do desk audits and determine that this is what is needed in that industry, that is what is needed in the manufacturing, that is what is needed there. No, we have to get on the ground and do the research. If not, we are missing the basics because we have an education system that is still designed for society that no longer exists. We have to go back to the basics, find the tools and technologies that will help us through this transformation. We have to, they say one man, one hand can clap. It is going to take all of us to reform the education system that we are presently in. So the persons that we prepare for the workforce, which is going to lead to sustainable economic development, they are getting the training, they are getting the skills, they're getting the professional, and the technological development that will take them into industry 5.0. It is urgent for us to think of work as an environment where you can learn. It is about providing skills that make the companies that we work with more resilient. And I said it before, that people must be able to grow in the company environment or they are going to leave. We have had persons in the tech business and uh, doing some research realize that these persons, they don't stay in those jobs for more than two years. And two years is sometimes kind of long for them. Why? Because these people, they're innovative, they want the opportunity to learn while they are on the job. They want to be able to research and to, to, to follow the trends that are out there. And 
if they do not get these opportunities, then they are going to leave. I'm like, um, we in Jamaica, we are, we, are, we are facing the realities of that just now. But then we look on it and we say that employer employees must be empowered. Employees who are not empowered either become one of two things. They become very passive and accept whatever is put on the plate for them. They do not move to get additional information. They don't become flexible, right? And if our employers keep these employees there, then your business is going to become stagnant. Your business is going to be left behind because you have employees who are not empowered to move your business forward. And our employers, must enable lifelong learning and give skill opportunities to our employees out there. So I'm speaking from both sides of the coin. If you are in training, the training that you receive must be on the cutting edge. The trainers must be at the point where they are so afraid all the cutting edge things in industry so they can pass it on to you. It's the same thing with the employer. He has to give the opportunities. He has to enable lifelong learning if he wants his employees to grow with the company and for the company to grow. The future of work is collaboration, lifelong learning, and skills validation. We're not able to do this for our students who are going out there, for our employees who need the skills validation and the lifelong learning, then we're not ready to move to 5.0. And what is most important is the capacity of our workers to be flexible. Because you know, we have some employers, you know, who are really willing and really want to get their, their employee, employees, the kind of training that will put them on the cutting edge. But we have employees who out there will tell you, I went to college in 2000, and what I learned in college, it can keep me going. Or, I'm not interested in anything that is out there. Me all, I have nothing to do with technology. But as employers, if we have these persons within our employment, it is for us to seek to empower them because they are going to be left behind. And so in reimagining TV for sustainable um, growth, the future lies in fulfilling a mural board on three elements. These three elements. One, we must consistently invest in making our properties creative spaces for the core engaged in designing state-of-the-art digital skills situation. We have to consistently allow our employees to be innovative, to be designing things, to be able to research things. Because equally, we run the risk of losing it all if we do nothing but just follow the status quo. But last, but by no means least, we must create the pathway towards Industry 5.0. We have to celebrate and recognize the skills and ingenuity of our employees as they transform our work environment. 
we are not able to do that, then we run the risk of not being able to move our industry forward and to be able to get part of that pie that speaks to sustainable economic growth. Then we move to the next slide. Because the next slide speaks to the three elements that, that we have here. First of all, we have to look at the state of the art situation and how we are going to use digital skills transformation to get there. I know changes can be difficult, you know. It can be very difficult. The technology, the technology is available, but not always accessible for us. And there are times when it is accessible, but it's not guaranteed. We have to see available training aligned with the demands of Industry 5.0 to ensure that what we are training persons for is relevant to the needs of the transformed industry. If we don't, we run the risk of exclusion, us not being a part of the new system. We run the risk of workers' mental health going down because our workers are now going to be so stressed, mental and anxiety, all of these things are changing around me and I don't know about it. How do I now become a part of it? But you had the opportunity, but you never gave your employees that opportunity so that they could transform to meet what is there. And then we are going to end up with a lack of skilled persons to impact the transformed society. But there's an ideal pathway. And this ideal pathway that we are looking at is where the environment, the work environment becomes the learning environment also, where education and production intersect, you know, like a Venn diagram and that section where it intersects. That is how we now have to look at training and educating our persons toward sustainable economic growth in 5.0. While we do that, we also have to validate the skills. So skills validation now becomes so important. Because you know something? You can tell me that you're a chef. And I know you a chef because that's my, one of my professions. You can tell me that you're a chef. And you can tell me how to make the five mother sauces. What is the science between making those sauces? But you cannot apply the technology to make the sauces. And having the theory without that technical component of it, it's no use to you. It has no use at that point. So we have to bring education and production to that point where they intersect and in doing so we will end up reskilling and aligning for sustainable development what are the actions that we need to do um to to take one of the most important action that we have to take is creating a profile 
creating a scorecard for Industry 5.0. Because if we don't know where we are going, we will not know when we get there. We now have to ensure that industry and academia is totally aligned. We have to see things in real terms, see the real needs. We have to align, we have to research, and we have to ensure that the industrial needs, the technical needs, are being met and the most important of all we have to train our trainers because without our trained trainers we are fighting a battle that is going to take us down a pathway that has nothing to do with tvet 5.0 Colleagues, we are at that inflection point right now. And if we do not, and I, I stress this, if we do not become flexible, if we do not upscale, rescale, align to industry standards and ensure that whether it is ambient learning metaverse or steam or stem that we are dealing with moves with us into 5.0 then we will realize that yes we might be reimagining tvet but not TVET 5.0. Please, there's a task ahead of us, and it takes all of us. It's skills that pays the bills, and if we don't get to TVET 5.0 within the time frame to ensure sustainable economic growth, then we would have failed. And we know that we're resilient. We are not failures. So we are going to get it done. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. All right, thank you very much, Dr. Dyer, for those thought-provoking words on um, reimagining TVET um, 5.0. We see now we're traveling globally you no longer have to wait on immigration to check you in, right? You take your own pictures, you do everything you need to do, get where you want to get. And so we, as a country, definitely need to take heed to your warning, especially that you have the, the experience to be telling us to do that, right? So I, I think for us, we have to definitely think, share and grow in the economy we can accommodate two questions ladies and gentlemen two quick questions quickly star garden and blessed afternoon everyone thank you dr dial for such an insightful presentation my question is and i have some teachers here on the platform that i've invited and they might be asking how does TVET 5.0 support economic growth when it is going to eliminate labor, bring about unemployment in an era when a lot of people are resistant to technology and changes? Because we talk about robotics, um, artificial intelligence, you know, replacing manual labor. How will it enhance on employment and professional growth and development. Okay, um, thank you for that question, Ms. Crossdale. But you, um, you will realize that while I spoke to um, artificial intelligence and robotics and all of that, I spoke about the human-centric approach because even though we, we, we will be transformed into, uh, I love to use the word metaverse, augmented realities mm -hmm. those cannot exist <laughs> on their 
own. The human component has to be there. And that's why I said, we now have to transform our education system where our persons that we are training are being trained to understand these augmented realities, this artificial intelligence, so that they can be the one managing the functions of these items in aug augmented reality. So yes, there's going to be displacement of persons, but these persons will have to be responsive and flexible enough to adapt to the technological transformation to be able to get the new jobs in those dispensations. Well said, thank you so much. You have answered my question. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Right, and if I may add, Doc, the, you mentioned in your presentation that um, the skill trans, um, the, the workers, because once upon a time, typewriters, when you're a typist, you were highly in demand. Yeah. And now we no longer really need typists, but we still need the same typing skill, but on a computer. We need the keyboard and not skills. on a typewriter. Yes. So we so we have to transform ourselves and prepare. I always say, Doc, we need to prepare our students to be global citizens. And I say, learn local, earn global. Yes. So we have to change the way we, we prepare students. And the global marketplace is coming to Jamaica through logistics, through business processing. And oftentimes, we get upset that the BPO in Jamaica is only getting person to answer phone. But... If one should carry an accounting firm to Jamaica and need 500 accountants, are we able to produce 500 accountants who will be paid top money to do top jobs? So we have to be realistic as a country that we are not producing persons at the high level skill that we need. Um, same thing for food processing dog. We don't do food processing at that scale where soya beans could be processed in Jamaica and we have the requisite persons with the food processing qualification to carry that off. So we have right. to balance things in, 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 you know, supporting our economy and producing high level and high skills that's necessary to attract high level investment. So we'll always get low level jobs because we train low level. And that's why it is so important One more for question. us to, ahead, to, um, to be that flexible and responsive so as the transformation come, not all of us will be able to, um, to move with the transformation at the pace that we would, um, would want to. But then we, we have to have persons who are willing and ready to move with this transformation so that we are not left in the balance. All right, so with that, we say thank you very much, Doc, and uh, very insightful um, presentation, and we look forward to having you again sometime in the future, because uh, we are transforming TVET one webinar at a time. So next week, we have a seminar that we don't want to miss. Next week, we're looking at facilitating Generation Z. What's the challenge with facilitating this magical set of human beings that exist in our society, in our school, and in a post-COVID classroom environment? How do we adopt our facilitation techniques to deal with this um, generation? So we will definitely be up for a hot topic next week. And as you mentioned transformation, Doc, so many times in your presentation, I just want everyone to know that one of our presentations in September will be dealing with the entire issue of transformative training. What does it mean? Because we use the word transform, transform, but can we transform students with a PowerPoint presentation? As Doc was saying, the skill and the theory must intersect and meet. And so that will mean retooling. Also, Doc mentioned retooling of our instructors because some of our instructors really need to be, um, if you're gonna lead and model, as we learned last week in uh, Mr. Marsh's presentation on the issue of behaviorism, 
where the instructor must model the behavior that he or she wants the students to carry. If the instructor is not living in TVET 5.0, then it will be difficult to see such an instructor bringing a student into TVET um, 5.0. So until next week, same place, same time, same link, we will definitely be moving into looking at facilitating Generation Z. All right, so until next week, ladies and gentlemen, thank you once more for participating in our session today. Thank you. All right, take care, everyone.